This is the Iowa Weather Report for Monday, February 17th, 2014. And now our first look at the Zero Z GFS model run. It's at noon today. We have a system moving through the middle part of the country, through the state, pretty much still with the zonal flow across the country. And this system will be moving in fairly quickly into the state and quickly moving out of the state. It'll slowly start to move out by the afternoon hours. Highs today will be in the 30s in the east to maybe the 50s in the west where some sunshine could break out by the afternoon hours. That system quickly moves off to the east over the New England states here on Tuesday. Temperatures don't cool off though with this zone of flow and highs will still remain in the 30s and 40s across the state. Cooler in the heavier snow packed areas and warmer in the less snow packed areas or no snow packed areas. Wednesday could be a bit warmer, highs upper 30s northeast to maybe low to mid 50s south and west with plenty of sunshine around. But the next storm system builds in very late Wednesday night and into Thursday. That could bring some more freezing rain, rain, sleet, snow, maybe isolated thunderstorms in far southeast Iowa. We'll have to continue to monitor this situation as we draw closer. That system really moves off to the north and east. The low pressure center over James Bay. Cold front moving through the eastern Great Lakes down to the southeast with some showers and thunderstorms and some snow behind it. The next system comes in from the west and that could bring a few light snow showers or a few flurries during the morning hours on Saturday before it quickly moves off. Temperatures do cool back down into maybe the th around 30 or so for a daytime temperature and maybe into the 20s to low 30s here on Sunday as high pressure comes in from the north and west. So we could be back below average by the heading into the last weekend of the month. And speaking of next Monday, here's the pattern. You can see a ridge pumping up over the Cascades up into British Columbia and then a trough kind of digging its way through the Great Lakes into the northeast and that means the temperatures are going to remain quite chilly as we go into the last week of February, the last couple days of the month and maybe a little bit of snow activity as well but we'll have to wait and see. As we go into the extended period, this is the 28th of February, we have a shortwave trough over New England and the mid-Atlantic states and a bit of a a split flow north and south of the state. We have the cold air pretty much from the Mississippi River eastward across the, the eastern Great Lakes, the mid-Atlantic and northeast, while warmer than normal conditions or warmer than average conditions elsewhere. And then on the end of the forecast on the 4th of March, uh, the flow is back to being more zonal. Bit of energy moving across eastern Canada into the Great Lakes, another or into the New England states, another piece moving through the plains, and that could bring maybe some interesting weather if this is to be right on the 4th. But again, this is more than two weeks out, and this is likely to change from run to run for the next week or so. The satellite image from last evening, you can see the next storm system moving into the plains. That's going to quickly move across the state today and be east of the state by late tonight and into tomorrow. And another storm over the Pacific Northwest as well. Taking a look at the watch warning map from last evening, you can see some winter weather advisories across the northern, the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes, a few winter storm warnings as well, and some freezing rain advisories, and some also over the north and west. The QPF chart, precipitation over the next five days through Friday evening at 6 o'clock, showing the precipitation amounts with this storm and the next storm, maybe between about a quarter of an inch to three quarters of an inch from west to east, heaviest over the northwest and southeast.